Mike Schiero. As a young surfer from South Jersey during the 1960s, drawn by the magnetic pull of the Hawaiian Islands, Mike enrolled at the University of Hawaii. He got stoked on the surfing culture there and was inspired to launch Kona Surfboards back in his home state. Mike's early exposure to the top surfers and shapers in Hawaii at that time, as well as a desire for quality surfing products and a passion for surfing, was the initial spark. Almost 50 years later, the Kona brand is still going strong. Mike still gets in the water as often as possible, and while his family has taken over the day-to-day -day operation of Kona Surf Company, Mike remains totally involved in everything surfing related and is more stoked than ever. Okay, here we are today with Mike Schiera uh, from Wildwood, New Jersey, the founder and owner of Kona Surf, which is one of the best surf shops ever in South Jersey. And uh, we're stoked that you're here, Mike. Uh, you were inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2019. So just to, to get right down to it, um, you've been a lifelong surfer. Um, How did you get your start in Wildwood? It was a long time ago. There wasn't many surfers there. I'm surprised I didn't meet Mike there, <laughs> swimming in the back bay. <laughs> right, with his family. <laughs> so I started surfing, and we were big water skiers when we were like from 10 to 13. That was our big thing. We slalom skied, and we did that. And I said, I think I'll pick up surfing. So I started surfing in 1964 yeah. in Wildwood. Um, there was about five or six of us had surfed that I, we could find a roundup. We went to the fishing pier. We had some friends in Cape May. We kind of, Wildwood was kind of like, at Wildwood, Cape May, we were sort of the orphans of New Jersey. Like, Ocean City was a big place and above, you know. Right. But we were like the little orphans down there in those days. And we started surfing, and we had a great com camaraderie with the, with the guys in Cape May, like Steve Piagetine, Steve McDowell. You know, we all kind of bonded together, and uh, I got my first board in 1964. It was a Scoop surfer from a sporting goods store. Scoop, I somehow he imported his own boards. Don't ask me how he ever did it, 50 years. but they had Scoop <laughs> surfer on them. They weighed like 500 pounds, <laughs> and it took two of us to carry it to the beach. Yeah. And really, the best story was we started surfing, and we went, we got to surf in the winter. So we said, how do we surf in the winter? And I, I went to, I had a comic book believe it or not, and they had a little ad in the back of the comic book, Central Divers Skin, Central Divers, buy a, a suit for $80. $80. Fill out the forms, I filled out the form, I had $80, I worked all summer, I got the suit back. And I was like the happiest person yeah, in the world. We could walk down the street and surf. <laughs> oh man, that's, that's fantastic. So um, you, uh, you went on to, to become part of the industry right. and you opened up a surf shop um, but you did some things before that yeah. I think you went to Hawaii yeah. uh, well, to go to story, school. The story was I was in the Vietnam era um, you know we all were worried we're gonna go to Vietnam you know so, and I said I, I gotta go to college so they weren't taking college students at that time right so I, I got this postcard in the mail I filled it out it was Florida Institute of Technology in Melbourne Florida I said I'm I going. said, maybe they'll accept me. <laughs> <laughs> and I got accepted. I went, oh, my God, I'm going to Florida. I ain't going nowhere. So I, Hatteras was the furthest I ever traveled. Right. And, you know, we had six kids in our family, and it was like we were on our own, do what you're doing. And they never, they didn't travel a lot, so we were pretty much stuck in Wildwood. <laughs> but went to FIT, and at that time, Cocoa Beach and all that area was the hot spot. Oh, you had crop, you know, proper and cousins. Gary, Gary and... Proper was the man. And <clears throat> believe it or not, Mike Tabling was in our one of my classes. Wow. So I got to know Mike, and he was the, he was a big dog in those days. They, you know, he was on the Weber team and all that. And then I met a bunch of friends in, from Jacksonville that were surfers. And we got to be friends. He got to be friends. I went up to Jacksonville a few times during, during the year. And then I said, ah. And then I, you know, had my first year, and I said, oh, I don't know, I want to keep surfing, man. This is, uh, I want to go to Hawaii. So I filled out this application real quick to U University of Hawaii, and I wanted to get my credits transferred. And sure enough, I got accepted, like, July 30th. One week, I had to be in Hawaii. <laughs> so you, your parents were like... They, you know, they just said, if you can get there, get there. And it, it, believe it or not, the tuition at that time was $125. 
It cost me more to get there than the tuition. Wow. If you can believe that. That's, that's crazy. And, you know, and I spent f about five years there on and off. You know, I graduated in 72. And my friends from Florida came over and we all used to live together. We'd go out to the North Shore. We'd surf the South Shore. I mean, I, you know, we see all the, the, the heavyweights, you know. They were always there. We were kind of the fringe guys. Yeah. You know, we would, you know, we'd come up to them. They'd talk to us a little bit, you know. We were kind of the underground surfers out there. But it was a great experience. And, you know, and I, I learned how to make surfboards there. And that was really the big thing for me. So I started making a few boards out there. And my friend Scott from Jacksonville, he, we were pretty tight with making boards. I said, let's go to Wildwood. Uh, maybe we can make boards there. You know, there's no, there's no boards around here. So I went the first summer and I told my mom, I said, look, I'm going to get these board, these blanks are going to come in. She goes, what's a blank? <laughs> I said, well, it'll be coming down our driveway. These guys are going to bring Bob big boxes and we'll have these blanks. So I said, I'm going to make these boards in the garage. So I ended up making like about 40 boards in my garage the first summer. And then I went back to UH, back to school. And then I got Scott. I said, Scott, let's come over. We'll start. We'll make boards. We'll get a place. And my mom found a little storefront for me. And we started, we made a little shaping room and a little glass room in the back. He glassed the boards. I would shape them. And uh, we, we kind of started the business. We were just getting out of college. So he hung around. We stayed around. And we, you know, stayed open until about October. And then we left. <laughs> but then I kind of decided that I would make my own, make, make, you know, have a bigger operation. So we had this warehouse in the west side of Wildwood, and I had a few other, uh, Steve, Steve work with me, and we did that till about 76. And then we started the skateboard company. Yeah, your skateboard uh, yeah, business Co was really good. Yeah, Cone Skateboards, 1976. I had this crazy guy working with me, Eugene. He was like a leprechaun surfer guy. He was like 10 years older than me. He goes, I'm going to go to New York and go on a sports show. So he, we have, he goes in his show in New York. He comes back. We printed up these order papers. He comes back with like a stack of orders this high. I go, For we, skateboards? Yeah. I said, we can't do this. How are we going <laughs> to do this? And we ended up doing that for a couple of years, but we just couldn't do the wholesale one. And then I really got into retail, and then that was when I really started with the retail. Because I had to survive. I had two kids, a wife, you know. I, it was like, can you make money with surfboards? It was tough. But, you know, things have changed, you know. And I've kind of, I had a career in retail, and then now I'm back into a career of making surf, not making surfboards, but kind of involved with them. My uh, second son, who kind of came on to help me with the business, he said, look, we can't stay in business doing it the way you did it. You can't sell, the, you know, a, a bike or, a, you know, we got to make it a real surf place. So we bought this other building and uh, we made it a surfboard, strictly surfboards. And uh, it's been really successful for us. And we have the regular store with the retail store. So I've been really fortunate to have a great kids, a great wife. Mark, you know them all. <laughs> so you're, you're celebrating what year in the business now? Um, I started really in 1970, and this first store was 1972. So whatever that means, 50 years. Over 50 yeah, years. Yeah, 50 years, and it's been a great ride. And now I work in a surf shop with my 26-year-old guy who surfs every day, texts me, tells me on the ways are good, let's get out there. All these people come in, we sell them boards, soft boards, and it's been, we had an awesome summer, it was so much fun. And it's amazing the people that are taking up surfing. I mean, you've seen it. Yeah, it's... it's, it's, it's these it's, girls, 13-year-old girls, there's hundreds of them now. They all want to surf. Yeah. And, and Wildwood, believe it or not, is a great place to learn. Oh, it's user-friendly, beginner-friendly. Yeah. yeah. And just to say one note about uh, the ESA and, and uh, Mrs. Gratola. I mean, the, when I first started, ESA was really not happening too much. It was kind of... We didn't even see the ESA until really Ruth got involved. And when she brought it with Joey and, and Joey and Lisa really have helped surfing so much down there. They were, they were like a, they were a little younger than me, but they were an inspiration too. And Ruth was a, was a great mom and a great backer of surfing. Yeah. And, uh, it's been a great run and I'm still going like, uh, like Gary said and everybody. So I'm a happy person and. Hope I can do it another, I don't know how many years. <laughs> well, I think we've got to end it on that note, yeah. on that high note. Yeah, it's great. It's been a great, great run. And Mark, you've been with me all the time.
Uh, that guy there, he's, what's he selling now? <laughs> That's what my son goes, what's he, what lines he got now? <laughs> well, you know, I, I you're, like working you're, with you're you guys. Best, you know, you, you're not the easiest, but I love you guys. I, I'm easy. He's hard. <laughs> I'm, I'm a pushover. You know that. <laughs> we want that, I buy it, right, Mark? Well, we've done a lot we, of We had stuff. a great, great run, and you're one of the uh, icons of the industry, too. you got to remember that. Even though you were an icon server, I didn't know all that stuff about you until the interview. Right. Yeah, you surf in, you know, in the contest that much and all that. Oh, yeah. You never told me. Uh, so we'll have to have another beer, and we'll go over that again. <laughs> you know a place where we can get a beer down there? Yeah. <laughs> all, all right. right. Thanks, all right, Mark. Mark. Great. Thanks a lot. <laughs>